While making the marketing materials for the Modius C1 release, I made a few quick efforts to build some demonstrations showing interesting projects. This hoverbot, or balancing hoverboard motor robot, was one of those. It ended up being way more fun than I had anticipated, especially when operating it. These clips show how it works in a variety of outdoor environments. External disturbances in either pitch, lateral force, or yaw are no problem. It can spiral, spin, drive forwards and backwards equally well. It can handle rapid changes in terrain, including steep slopes, and can ride itself from any resting orientation. This video describes a bit about how the Hoverbot was built and what it can do. I had two random hoverboard motors I had acquired on eBay several years ago sitting around that were in my Hall Effect Sensor testing bin for Modius. The concept was to stick those on a mobile platform with a computer and batteries and let it drive around. The mechanical design is fundamentally a single rigid system with the two wheels sticking out the side and a mast to form the inverted pendulum that holds the battery on the back and the computer on the front like so many balancing robots before it. I designed it for 3D printing with two primary components. The base has mounting facilities for the two hoverboard motors, supports two Modius C1s, and also has holes to pass wires between the bottom and top. The chassis supports a Raspberry Pi, Pi 3 hat, and power disc on one side, and a cordless drill battery on the other. Under the battery, there are some mounting flanges to hold it in place. I designed this to use my standard 3D print construction technique, which has heat set inserts and bolts. The base thus has a number of holes where inserts can be pressed in. Each of the mating plastic pieces then have bolts that pass through the piece and attach to the inserts. The chassis is attached similarly with inserts in the base. The chassis has inserts that the cosmetic cover attaches to. Unlike many of my projects, this was simple enough that I think I needed at most two prints for each of the main components before something was workable. The only custom harnesses needed were the power ones, and the whole build from design to completion was just around two days.
Moving to the software, I made a full copy of the Quad A1 source tree, as I knew I wanted to be able to control the robot with a joystick, monitor status with the phone web interface, record telemetry, and do all the basic things that the Quad A1 can do. Then I went and deleted everything to do with quadrupedal motion, which was a lot. I changed the allowable control modes to be a much smaller subset, as the only active modes I was interested in here initially were pitch control and velocity control. Then I made a placeholder for the actual control logic, which I didn't expect to be too hard. The control law I chose is the simplest one I could imagine, and probably one that many have chosen, although I didn't actually do any research here beforehand, so I have no idea exactly how it compares. To start with, let's look at the dynamics of the system. If we first assume that there is no friction with the ground or the air, then the robot will maintain a constant speed when the center of mass is directly over the center of rotation. In this frictionless world, if there is a non-zero pitch, then some torque will be required to keep the robot from falling over, and that torque will also accelerate the robot. Thus, for any given pitch angle, the robot will accelerate at a fixed rate. However, sadly, the world is not frictionless. In practice, there will be at least a rolling resistance and air resistance, both of which will increase as the robot's velocity increases. Thus, for a given pitch angle, the robot will accelerate until the torque needed to keep it upright equals the total of all resistance forces, after which it will maintain that speed. To work this into a controller, I started with an innermost loop that is a pitch and yaw controller. The pitch component is a plain PD loop, where the P term is the error in pitch and the D term is the difference between the sensed pitch rate and the desired pitch rate. The output torque from the pitch loop is applied equally to both wheels. With a desired pitch of zero, i.e. straight up, any disturbance will result in the proportional term providing a restorative torque. This will hold the robot at exactly zero, assuming a sufficiently large proportional term. When the desired pitch is not zero, then the actual pitch will stabilize with some steady state error. This error will grow until when multiplied by the proportional term it equals the torque required to counteract gravity at that point. In future versions of the controller, this steady state error could be significantly reduced using either a feed forward term or, at the expense of dynamic performance, an integrative term. The yaw component is also a plain PD loop, where the P term is the difference between the target yaw and the pi 3 hat yaw. The D term is the difference between the desired yaw rate and the pi 3 hat body Z rate, which is only an approximation of the actual yaw rate. And the output is a torque that is applied with opposite signs to the two wheels. The pi 3 hat does not have an absolute frame of reference for yaw, so the target yaw is initialized at startup to whatever the pi 3 hat reports, and then is just adjusted by the commanded yaw rate. When sending those torque commands to the Modius C1s, we just set the KP scale and KD scale both to zero so that only the feed forward torque term is used. I also manually calibrated a pitch that resulted in roughly zero acceleration forward or backward and used that as the center of the pitch control. This mode was trivial to tune, runs very smoothly, and is actually really fun to drive, although it is hard to hold exactly in one spot. However, it can easily get moving beyond the maximum speed of the hoverboard motors. When that happens, it results in what I call a USM, or unplanned slide maneuver. The outer control loop is a velocity one. It is a PI loop where the P term is the difference between the desired velocity and the average measured velocity of the two wheels. The integral term holds position, although there is an anti-windup term so that if you push it far enough off that it won't return exactly. The output is a desired pitch centered around the pre-calibrated zero point. The velocity mode was also trivial to tune, although it is a bit coggy at low speed, 
as the only speed sensor used now is that derived from the Hall effect sensors on the hoverboard motors, which are very coarse and have only 90 ticks for a single revolution. The benefit of the velocity mold is twofold. First, you can easily hold position at a given location. Second, you can set a velocity limit below that which the motors are capable of, so those pesky USMs aren't as much of a factor. The final addition on the control side was a transient stand-up state that is used when entering any of the control modes from a stopped state. Here, the pitch mode is used and the target pitch is ramped linearly from wherever it started to zero over an approximately half second window. This lets the robot get into a drivable position in a controlled way. The hoverbot can drive over a pretty wide variety of surfaces from smooth sidewalk, rough pavement, small debris, and grass and turf. It does have limits, uh, since there is no suspension, the maximum size of drop it can handle is relatively small, and the mast is not all that high, so the maximum slope it can climb is not too large. Despite that, it is a lot of fun to drive around, and could easily be a robust autonomous platform in a controlled environment. Thanks for watching.